Uh, we want to welcome you out tonight, whether you're in person or online. We just want to invite you to join us as we worship and sing out that song. Clap your hands. I know he's rescued my soul. His blood covers my sin. I believe. Oh, I believe. My shame is taken away. My pain is healed in his name. I believe. Oh, I believe.
say, Lord, blessed be your name. Give and take away, sing it out. Give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed. Blessed be your name. Give and take away. Give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed. your hands tonight. Just sing out that song and thank him for the sacrifice he made for us on that cross. Sing it out. Thank you for the cross, the mighty cross. That God himself would die for such as us. And every day we're changing your image more and more it's by the cross we truly been transformed we're so amazed and we give you praise that you would save us at such a cost and we're so amazed so change into your image more and more it's by the cross we truly been transformed and we're so amazed and we give you praise that you would save us in such a cause and we're so Oh, Lord, we thank you for the power of the cross, God. 
We praise your name in this place tonight, Father. We worship you, God. We thank you. We glorify your name. We glorify your name. Man, what a wonderful day we've had in the presence of the Lord. This morning, this evening, God is going to move in tonight's service, and we're very excited about what God is going to do. If you're here this evening and you are visiting with us for the first time, we want to welcome you. We want to let you know that God has a plan and a purpose for your life and that you can leave this place completely different than the way you came. And we're going to go before the Lord. We're going to open our service in prayer. But tonight we're going to do something just a little bit different uh, and that is because uh, Pastor Daniel Monreal uh, and his wife Sarai are here. They really wanted to dedicate uh, their child, Nehemiah, to the Lord. And so they brought their church with them tonight. And so they're going to come uh, and we're going to pray and we're going to dedicate Nehemiah to the Lord. Come on up. Hallelujah. You've been up here before, you know how it's done. You come from the long, blessed line of door directors. Do you know how? It's like people say, you know, once a Marine, always a Marine. Once you've been a door director, you know how it's done. And so, but in communicating, and I encouraged, uh, said, Daniel, tonight would be a great time to bring your church, yourself. We've been looking for a time to dedicate uh, Nehemiah Joshua Monreal, who was born September 1st, uh, 2022. At the time, he was a strapping two pounds 14 ounces he's a miracle baby and uh, so one day he's going to grow up like his brother so i can body check him uh, like isaiah and but we're going to pray uh, we love uh, Daniel and Sarai and just uh, their family. They've been nothing but a blessing. And it's a great uh, opportunity to turn around as a church and be a blessing to them. Your prayers. Stretch out your hands, if you will, saints, uh, as we pray tonight and uh, dedicate... Uh, Young Nehemiah, uh, Joshua, Monreal, his mom and dad. Father, we come this evening in your wonderful name. Lord, I thank you that you are in the business of not only saving and sending individuals, but sending, Lord, outstanding couples. Uh, Lord, a man and his wife that are one flesh uh, and are serving your purposes. Lord, we pray for Nehemiah right now. We dedicate him to you. I pray you would just strengthen him supernaturally in his body, soul, mind, and spirit. Uh, that he would become and uh, multiply and be such a blessing to his parents. Uh, God, for Daniel and Sarai, supernatural strength, uh, Lord, not only to be parents, but as they are pioneering a church, that you will give them the strength, the wisdom, all of the resources necessary as we stand behind them. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. We thank you for this special time, Lord. Let it be recorded in heaven in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you, brother. Bless you. Why don't you greet somebody, uh, introduce yourself to someone as you find your seats tonight. Just... 
Amen. We want to welcome everyone out this evening. It's good to see everybody here in the house of the Lord. If you're visiting with us, we want to welcome you, uh, especially this evening. We're glad you've joined us. If you're participating with us on, online, we want to thank you for participating with us as well. Man, we're looking forward to all that God is going to do uh, in our service this evening. Uh, we do have Pastor Francis Amfuso with us, ministered tremendous message this morning. This evening, he's going to minister the Word of God again. Before we get to that, let me give you a couple of announcements uh, that we have. Uh, Wednesday night is our midweek service at 7 o'clock, uh, and uh, we Always begin at 6 o'clock with prayer, so come and get a hold of God, and then 7 o'clock service starts. Next Sunday is our water baptism, and it's our next water baptism. If you've recently given your life to Jesus, many of you have. The, the first ask, if you will, of Christ is that you would, after you repent, be baptized in water. And so it's an act of faith. It is a going on record, uh, not only with your family, with the church, uh, uh, with God. I'm with God. I'm no longer uh, living my old life. I'm going to move forward with God, and I'm going to bury the old man in baptism. Uh, and so we want to encourage you, if you've recently given your life to Jesus, you've never been baptized in water, uh, there is a QR code in the lobby on the information desk. You just scan that, uh, sign up for it. That way we know uh, who to prepare for, and we'll get a hold of you with any sort of uh, details that you may need uh, for that. Amen. I want to ask the ushers to come this evening. We're going to worship the Lord uh, with our tithes and offerings. I want to remind you of Pastor Warner's uh, pledge and offering that he took last week uh, that we received uh, uh, on behalf of the conference as we're preparing for conference. Uh, all of the airfares, all of the expenses that we have coming up for conference, it starts now. It actually started uh, three weeks ago uh, as we started paying bills uh, for that and different airfares that we're trying to bring our missionaries in. And so I want to encourage you, uh, remember your pledges, remember your conference offering. Let God inspire you at any moment to just give. You can always text the amount, conference offering, uh, and that'll go directly to that account specifically for that. But let's, let's worship God with our giving this evening. Our heads are bowed. Brother Steve, would you pray for the offering? I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. I love to praise Him. I love to praise His name. Oh, I love to praise His holy name. I love to praise.
you to the musicians, the worship team this evening. Man, uh, back in the 90s, um, Pastor Amfuso would come regularly. And uh, I was a teenager at the time. And uh, I remember something very clearly. Pastor Francis is an in- incredible communicator. But he ministers in the gifts and specifically the word of knowledge, uh, gift of knowledge. And uh, I remember as a teenager, we would all joke around that we need to get our hearts right because Pastor Amfuso is coming. And so we need to make sure we repent and get our hearts right so that because when he if he calls you out and he, you know, (laughs) and we would always have this and he would always every word he would give would just be so encouraging and uplifting. I know many of you that are here tonight, you at one time received a word. If you're from back in those days, you received a word from him. It it was uh, something reinforcing something that God was doing and right on time. And so it was such so refreshing to have him here this morning. Uh, I know there's a great anticipation we have for what God is going to do tonight. And so let's show him our appreciation as he comes to minister the word of God to us tonight. Thank you, Dave. All right. What a joy to be with you tonight. Really, I'm very anticipatory of what God wants to do in a great morning, really sense God's presence. My beautiful wife is here tonight. I love you, Susie. Sometimes uh, Susie, when I'm speaking, will jump up and scream, and at that point, it's because I've said something she never heard before. And so if that happens tonight, don't be alarmed. It is also possible I could say something she's never heard before. If you see her lips move, she's lip syncing at that point. So that's another, <laughs> another thing that's going on. All right, it is an absolute joy again to be with you. I, later on, we'll minister in the gifts, see what God has here. Uh, but I do believe the word of God is quick and powerful. It accomplish its mission. So there's a specific word tonight for you that God is gonna speak. Uh, I believe it is a prophetic word. Uh, It is a profound word that has touched my heart, encouraged my heart for this season. And it's very important we understand the season we're in. Um, Ironically, um, uh, every season's valid. Every season's important. Um, And yet every season has its challenge. I know in my own life, I didn't like winters, my spiritual winters. Uh, But then I realized I would go deep in winter and that the profound internal things God wanted to do in me we're in the winter seasons. Uh, and I fell in love with winter. All of a sudden I realized, you know what? I may look cold and dead and frozen uh, on certain levels, but something internal is taking place. And maybe that's the season you're in. Uh, we all love springtime, but springtime can be perilous. David fell in the spring, a time when kings go out to war, he was surfing the net and taking naps. And so that got him in trouble. Uh, in the summer, Adam and Eve fell. It's always with summer in the Garden of Eden. Uh, Then during the fall, things fall away. And then in the winter time, again, uh, we need to go deep inside of us. This is a season where kind of more corporately in the planet, it's a a challenging season. Um, I pastored for 21 years in the first, second season, the first season, four and a half years, and then uh, have been retired from that for five years. And even as things have accelerated, I had a, a little bit of survivor's guilt as I would uh, talk to the different pastors in our region that things had gotten more difficult. But uh, the season that they are in and that I am in and that we are in still has opportunity if we can receive that and embrace that great opportunity. I believe, frankly, uh, a better opportunity now. To me, the harder it is, if you can train your mind to understand the difficulty. Obviously, a bow is pulling back an arrow, and the further it gets away from the target, at the point of release, the greater the power, the greater the thrust, and yet it's a harder season. And that's the way it is in God. It's a counterintuitive. It goes against our natural understanding. Harder is better. More faith pleases God. Greater stretching is what God wants to do, and that's the season we're in. There's something terribly wrong, first slide, there's something that's terribly wrong when we think our best days are behind us. Um, What a lie. The truth is, the God of this earth, I believe, set the visual of the first miracle being done 
uh, at Cana and that expression that the best wine was served last. Uh, think about this for your life. And even though we'll be doing a supernatural life starting tomorrow for four weeks, the supernatural life is very important, very important to me. It's a relationship with God, being spirit-led. My sheep hear my voice. Uh, those who um, ultimately are sons and daughters are those that are willing to hear and obey God. But another course that I do is really my life message. It's called The Secret to Loving Your Life. Do you love your life? Do you love the life God has given you? Do you not saying every moment of it, I'm saying do you see that in the dance that you're a part of, that God is leading your life in a way and things that you, man, I mean, my childhood, I didn't like my childhood. Went away to boarding school at 11, never lived at home again, atheist by 15, hated God, uh, angry with my father, glad the day he died. You know, so many uh, uh, difficult things in my childhood, and yet they opened doors in me to have compassion for people who were suicidal, who were bound by deception, who battled uh, depression or fatherlessness. And then I spent 17 years ministering in group homes for teenage girls. Uh, and then 10, 12 years ministering uh, for mi women in their 20s that are also in a group home but battling with addictions. And then false in prison, doing father wounds classes there. And so, you know, you never know how God's gonna use the pain in your life, your pain leads to your passion, which leads to your purpose. Your pain leads to your passion, which leads to your purpose. So never write those things off. So I believe with all my heart that each of us need to believe for what God has. What are you believing for right now? I did click that. Lord, heal this machine, Lord. Good. What are you believing for? Uh, you know, if I were to say, and I would ask people, and this is part of the secret of living your life sequence. You know, I would always stand out in front of our church and welcome people as they came in, and I'd say, how are you doing? Oh, man, I'm doing great. Really? That's awesome. What are you doing great about? And then I, I would sense uh, I needed to ask this question. Are you excited because of your circumstances or your perspective? Because if it's your circumstances, you can start saying goodbye. You know, you can be a yo-yo and be up and down your whole life, you know? And I, my temperament was that way. I was really high or I was really low, Everest, Death Valley. I could go pretty quickly. And I realized I wasn't, I, I tr trained my soul to not be as enamored by the highs or discouraged by the lows. I just began to accept whatever God was doing. It's all fine. It's all part of his script. It's all worth it. I just returned from a, a couple of prayer sieges. I sense in this season that God is calling us to pray in a supernatural way. Uh, obviously with what's happened in Israel, which affected me a great deal. I've personally been there a couple times. Uh, I have a background. I got saved on Mother's Day, which was Israel's birthday, May 14th, 1972. My first Holy Communion was Israel's birthday, 1955. My father was an Italian uh, uh, immigrant who became a congressman in an Italian Jewish neighborhood. Uh, the the uh, ambassador to Israel offered my father the ambassadorship at one point. So there was in Mart, I was the first non-Jewish president of my fraternity in college. So that was my background. I even traced it to the point where I believe my twin brother and I were conceived the same week in 1948 that Israel became a nation. And so on October 7th, when Israel was attacked, it affected me because it was a climactic moment. It was a sh age shifting moment. It had never happened like that. And it's meant to alert all of us. It's a different moment. It's a different season. Are you awake for this shift? And so then God brought a, a, a Messianic Jewish intercessor my way in November. Great lady, great teacher, a very, very wise woman. That was a blessing. She's part of my intercessory team now. And then in December, I was praying in a very anointed church and on my knees and I said, God, um, what do you want me to do at this moment? And he said these words to my heart. I'd never heard his audible voice, but he said this word clearly, it's your move. Mm -hmm. And what he was saying was, Francis, what's in your heart, buddy? 
What's in your heart? I'll back you up. I'm putting things in your heart. And it, it scared me a little because that's a great latitude. You know, you begin, God's going whatever. Go for it. And so I, then I decided, uh, I sensed that he wanted me. I'd gone away the January before, January of 2023 to pray and fast for a, a, about four or five days. And it was wonderful. And I would minister to one couple on a Zoom. One couple that my primary intercessor is an 89-year-old woman uh, who uh, I, I pastored their family and so um, I just felt led to help them to believe for their grandkids, so I met with them. It was a great time. But then God encouraged my heart, this year, this is a crazy thought, this year, I want you to go away, and I want you to spend four days, <laughs> and this is brutal, this is very intimidating, four days, 12 hours a day, on a live Zoom. <laughs> wow. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., you're there four days in a row. It was exhausting. I did have a couple of hours that intercessors pinched hit for me because I was a little delirious. But during that time, across the country, people you know, came on the Zoom and just had powerful times. So that was, I, I sensed in this season, it's a breakthrough opportunity. This is that season to believe. This is, I mentioned to you again this morning, if you were here, low tide, excellent impossible, I, there's nothing on my plate that's not impossible. I have two impossible movies that we're working on right, it's impossible. And I can just give up or I can say, you know what, I, I should stop reading the Bible. Because everybody in the Bible is doing impossible things. I, I was in Exodus this afternoon, I just sat out with the residence in and I just sat out and listened to the, the book of Exodus, the miracles, and, he, and just like, it's impossible, possible, possible possible, just to fill my soul with the reality that God wants to do something impossible in your life. Amen. You don't need a sage on the sage to speak to you. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. He wants to tell you today that I'm leading you in a certain way. And so that God put that on my heart. I did that in January. Then in February, um, a man who helps us a great deal, part of our church, 25 years, very, very successful realtor. Um, I was having coffee with him. He lives in Puerto Rico, but he happened to be in town. I was sitting outside, and, and he had come on at one point during those 48 hours in January. We prayed for his kids, for God to move in them. Just one of the people that came on. Uh, but as we're sitting there, I'm just sensing, you know, God is wanting me to do things, and, and even this Wednesday, uh, with pastors in the Sacramento region, they will come on. Uh, we are training, at one point we trained in the Sacramento region uh, 1,500 intercessors for 150 pastors and churches to pray for their pastors to be safe. That came out of hearing God say to me on a fast, you're not safe. What you're wanting to do, you're not safe. Get intercessors around you. And that has led me now to have intercessors probably for 15 years or so. Clearly, I know the battle that rages, the red dots that are on my chest. I'm believing for safety in my life. And so I'm talking to him about, I'm believing for more things. And uh, um, I, I know that he deals with a lot of realtors. He had just come from a nine o'clock meeting where he spoke to 100 realtors, going to a luncheon from me again to speak to 100 of them. And he's always bringing in Jesus. Secular, uh, you know, obviously real estate company, but he's always bringing in Jesus. And so while we're talking there, all of a sudden a car pulls up, a couple come up, and uh, they are a couple uh, that he had gone to our church. They have 14 children. Uh, he was a rough and tumble kind of a guy, uh, not the kind of guy you, you would feel comfortable approaching because he just kind of had a gruff exterior. But during a worship service, God gave me a word for him and I went up behind him and put my arms around him, around his neck. And not the kind of guy you want to do that to. And I whispered, whispered in his ear a prophetic word about God wanting to, and no knowledge, God wanting to deliver him. He was at that point struggling with cocaine. And uh, his wife ultimately uh, got their, they got their marriage restored, got to marry a couple of their kids. So this is the couple coming up from out of nowhere. They are, they're like poster couple of a family being helped. So we greeted each other. She came up with tears. Thank you for helping our family. I had not seen them uh, in about a year. 
since I retired. They live 45 minutes away. They shouldn't have been at that coffee shop. They were visiting a site. He's a contractor that he might do some business. Uh, my friend from Puerto Rico should not have been there. We all hugged. I said, let's pray about this. this is a special moment. Let's pray. We prayed. I then sat down with him and I said, I'm telling you these things because we're talking about the supernatural. I want you to begin to believe for God to serendipitously, supernaturally show up in your life. And so after that happened, I then said, I'm gonna, you know, in my, my heart, I'm thinking I'll be bold. I said to my friend, listen, you're having a big conference in Kabul, about a thousand realtors. Uh, why don't uh, I go there and then all afternoon, I will be in a room and just praying with people. They'll just come in and at a half hour slot, uh, they'll sign up on a calendar and they'll come in. So I just came back from that. That was this past week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, flew here Friday. And th those times, seven people prayed to receive the Lord. Dozens of people prayed. Sometimes three people came in at a time, uh, reading their mail, agnostics, people. And these are secular business people. And the Holy Spirit honored that crazy, you know, Hail Mary pass, Lord, open up the afternoon, wondering if anyone would come. And, the, and then it filled up with people, person after person coming. I wanna encourage you, this is the hour for you to believe. The Bible says, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To the end, keep alert with all perseverance. Praying at all times. I'm finding as I get older, and it, it's not delirium. I find myself literally walking around all the time just praying under my breath, speaking in tongues, praying under my breath. Just a prayer is coming forth. There's, it's like a, 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 a artesian well of, of concern, of care, of, of uh, praying for people I'm meeting or people I, I uh, love and, and care about or praying for the call of God or, or direction or vision that God has given me, praying at all times in the spirit, making supplication. So this is, a, this is really a life and death battle. Uh, death and life, the Bible says, are on the power of the tongue. So that means the prayers we pray have power to either bring life or bring death. We can supernaturally pray people into the kingdom of God. And I'm gonna talk about that. My sense of responsibility for something like this has been simmering for many years. Jesus said the night is coming when no one can work, emphasizing that there's a window of opportunity that we should not miss. This is not about guilt. This is not about feeling bad about things you've missed. I've missed lots of different things. I've missed great moments. Great moments, opportunities, they branded me. Remember my wife and I, we lived in Tahoe years ago, planted a, a church there, planted a, that's now a church, 50 years. Uh, this May is the anniversary. And uh, we had our young daughters with us. And we had just um, uh, been on a river there, beautiful Tahoe. Uh, and we were going back to the car and I forgot my sunglasses back at that river. We're all the way back in the car and now I'm a bit frustrated. So I uh, ran back about, I was younger in 40s, uh, ran back 15 minutes to the, the, the river. When I ran back, I, there's a guy on a log in the middle of the forest. And I saw him there and he looked really like he was hurting. But I'm kind of, you know, still upset about my stupid sunglasses. And so I went back, got my sunglasses. At that point, my heart was different. And I was ready, I was looking forward then to ministering to him. And guess what, he wasn't there anymore. Oh, wow. I don't know, that, that sounds like nothing. But that affected me a great deal. I've, I've cried over that numerous times. Uh, and still could cry today because he represents people that the Holy Spirit, I'm glad someone cared about me. I'm glad someone reaches out to me in my own life. And so I just want you to become sensitive to that tug in your own life. Only God can rescue our loved ones. My heart goes out to every mother who has a broken relationship with her child. Don't stop praying for them. During that week in January, I had a numbers of mothers. I haven't talked to my daughter in 12 years. I haven't talked to my son in seven years. I've got a child that has this debilitating illness and, or I'm estranged. I mean, all kinds of issues. And some of you in the room, you can get really quiet because you know there are folks in your life that you're agonizing for. I'm telling you, do not give up on them. This is the moment for you to believe for them. I've seen that in my own life. 
I've seen it in history. God the Father, you may have heard about this, had a son and a daughter who got into serious trouble. Have you guys heard about that? It was a real scandal. It messed things up in their entire family. But the father didn't give up on his children. One of their descendants killed his brother. That was a problem. But the father refused to give up on him. Again, my wife and two daughters and their husbands all love Jesus, and I'm very grateful for that. Very grateful for that. But, but the souls of all seven of our grandchildren are in play. 11 to 17, all in play. And that, my wife, that's her particular anointing. I ski in her wake regularly as we go for prayer walks. I just latch on and I just let her take me for her intercessory ride. What if our prayers were the tipping point to open our loved one's hearts? The Bible says he, Jesus, is able to save the uttermost, those who draw near to him, near God through him, since he is always living to make intercession for them. You never have to pray alone again if you recognize Jesus is praying with you. There's always someone giving an amen, an unction. We have the unction of the Holy One, the Bible says. So God is looking for intercessors who will repair the breaches, who will stand in the gap. This is a perfect time in this breach time, in this gap time. I mean, when I got saved, you know, parents were not thinking in 1969, isn't it awesome there's a half a million naked kids taking drugs at Woodstock? They weren't thinking what a grand opportunity this is for a Jesus movement. But four million young people got saved during that time. Your pastor and I were one of them, or two of them actually. I look for a man, a woman, among them who would build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so that I would not destroy it, but I found none. That book there is my, my mother's actual intercession book. She prayed for hundreds of people every day. This is me there on the right, long-haired walking germ during that season. But my mother's prayers got me on Mother's Day. Nine nine months she had not seen me, 3,000 miles away. She got me and I knew it was her prayers. Moms, dads, do not give up on your family. Do not give up on what God wants to do in them. And again, that's her book, the worn pages of her book. And my siblings, I was the first one saved, all of them got saved. 50 years later, they are still alive, still praising Jesus. A mother's prayers have power. A father's prayers have power. She prayed four hours a day for hundreds of people. I remember trying to call, she was from New York, Brooklyn, New York, and so uh, I've tried to lose most of the accent if I can. And so she was in New York and uh, you know, I would say, mom, can I come over and visit? And she goes, you can't come this afternoon because I'm praying between two and four. Mom, I would not come this afternoon between two and four. I will not do that. She took it seriously. She did not have a prayer partner other than Jesus. She never had a human being next to her in agreement. And maybe you do, or maybe you don't. God loved me when I openly mocked him and his word, ridiculed sincere Christians, and laughed at my saintly mother as she prayed. I resisted God's spirit for years until I was bankrupt of all the intended, and yet, God was loving me every painful moment. Came across the country in a hippie van, 1971. Ex-girlfriend in the van, had an abortion with her two months before. It destroyed our relationship. Best friend in the van, twin brother in the van. I'm desperate, I'm suicidal now for a number of months. Go out in the desert. Have you guys ever heard of the desert? In Arizona, somewhere, I don't know where we were. I just realized I was in Arizona, sorry about that. Uh, I know that, but it was somewhere in a desert in Arizona, among the sagebrush, I went out there under the stars with a dull pocket knife in my hand, and I screamed out something that I didn't know till later that I had screamed out, God help me. 
Twin brother heard the scream, came running over, saw the blood, trying to, you know, say, grab the knife, said, Francis. And we all cried together. They didn't know what to do with me, so a week later, I was threatening suicide constantly. They, they collected some money and put me on a plane to go to Hawaii. Sounds exotic? Not if you're suicidal. <laughs> Woke up, spent the first night in Waikiki in the bushes, awakened by sprinklers at 3.30 in the morning that hosed me down. <laughs> then lived in an abandoned parachute with nine other people on the beach who never said a word to each other. Empty, broken. But I was getting ready to humble myself. Then prayed on the island of Molokai with my best friend who came over. We prayed this prayer as we were studying Eastern things and various kinds of religious things. We prayed, Jesus, Krishna, Buddha, we have studied your teachings. You're all not the same person. Reveal yourself to us. Would got saved a few months later. The Holy Spirit hears prayers. One minute before I received Jesus, I was in rebellion. But he was in love. Two minutes later, his love had not increased. So, okay, a person without God, God's madly in love with them. Madly in love. They receive Jesus. Has his love increased? How could it? He was at peak love. You can walk away from God. He's not this, yo he doesn't vary. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's always been madly in love with you. He will always be madly in love with you. But we, if we surrender our heart, then we begin to lock in to his amazing plan for our life. And that changes everything. But him loving you has nothing to do with your performance. You can't do more good things, he'll love you more. Do bad things, he'll love you less. His love is unconditional and constant. And that's why it's so incredible because it's not about what we do to please him. He smiles when he thinks about us. And I believe he's always thinking about us. I believe that. In eternity, we won't spend one moment focusing on what we did wrong, but what God did right on our behalf. We're not gonna say, and tonight we're gonna take a look at Susie's sins. That's not gonna happen. We'll be talking about the glorious things that God did. Now, I believe that we will know each other on some level, and in some way, the scars that we have been through. See, you know, our lives are not going to be washed away. We're just these little angelic beings that are floating around having no knowledge. No, there'll be some understanding. It makes sense. We'll be known as we are known, and yet without the guilt or condemnation or the shame, because the whole planet is filled with sinners anyway. So what if your prayers were the tipping point for your loved one. I know that after the elections and COVID and the attack on Ukraine and Israel, uh, that, that it's difficult for each, each of us to believe. Uh, but we also believe that anything is possible. The headline tomorrow could be anything. I have found though that fear is a tell. What does that mean? And especially as it gets darker, fear will, will tend to kind of assault each of us. The enemy is the, the only fully doomed person. He and his minions are damned to hell. There'll be no option for them. And that's terrifying. He, he knows. Their demons are actually afraid of what's going on. And so in my own life, I recognize that peace is when I step out. So tonight, when I minister in the gifts, I'll be looking for the peace of God in my heart. The Bible talks about the wisdom from above is pure, peaceable, gentle, easily entreated, a little tug, the tug of the Holy Spirit. I'm looking for the peace of God to rule in my heart. If I'm confused, I'll shut down. I remember especially during that evangelistic season of almost 20 years where I came to you guys and other churches that you'd go to a place that you had been and there, there was an expectation to do something. And that can make you want to step out on your own strength to do something. So I would say to the Lord, I'm not going to do any. I ministered over 19,000 people uh, during that season uh, individually like we're going to do tonight. But I recognized that I don't wanna miss God, and the way to miss God is me stepping out of my own strength. So at peace, I'll do it. Confusion, I'm done. And I would say to the Lord in those situations, I don't care what they want, 
I remember a pastor saying, you know, we really love your word, it's awesome, but you can just prophesy. I said, no, I'm sorry. We have a more sure word of prophecy. I'm not just gonna get up and prophesy. We're gonna preach the word, the Bible says. And so the, the problem though comes when we are afraid. We have to deal with that. So peace, good. Confusion, stop. But our tendency is to stop during fear. And yet that is the moment to go forward. Fear is a tell, it's like in poker. I'm not a poker fan, but I know enough that in poker, if someone has a twitch when they push all in, if they have some kind of a tell, some kind of a tick that alerts the other players, this guy has it or he doesn't have have it, if you know that other person's tell, it helps you. And so the devil's tell is fear. He uses fear to stop us And yet that is the catalyst, I believe, to launch us. It's the champagne on the hull to obey at that moment of fear. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord, he's coming in like a flood. The Spirit of the Lord is raising up a standard against him. That's when you go in. So crisis is meant to show us that we have another gear. I have another gear. I have another dimension of stepping up. Elijah's widow thought all she had was death Death, depth, depth, depth. Gosh, it's a simple word. It's only four letters. <laughs> I've never mispronounced the word debt before. <laughs> but it looks like depth. Death, <laughs> debt, and destitution. But what she really had was a seed for a miracle. You're thinking what you have is too small. All of us have more than you need. Mustard seed, smallest of seed, grows to the biggest tree. He doesn't need, it takes more faith to have less. And he proved that over and over again. God is not preparing us to despair, but preparing us to pursue him in prayer. We all feel exhausted at not seeing all the fruit we want. Master, in Luke 5, we fished all night and caught nothing. Maybe you're here and you're saying, man, I've been working hard and I don't see the fruit I want to see. Awesome. That is so awesome. Now you're ready to step out in faith. Now you're ready. Don't give up now. This is the moment. And so then Jesus came to them. And what did he say? He said um, something. (laughs) He said, put your nets in and, and catch a a mighty harvest. They had to bring another boat they had so much. They were exhausted, don't give up. Let us not lose heart in doing good for in due season, due time, we will reap if we don't faint, if we don't grow weary. If you faint, will you reap? Mm, I'm sorry, give me a hug, but no. You pulled out too soon. You gave up too early. We all give up too soon. Our great tendencies were just at that moment, oh my gosh, you are ready for God to do something and we give up. So I've strapped myself to the impossible table. I'm strapped to it. I will not move. And again, the sand in my hourglass is, is running out here. I don't have like many decades left. And so I am staying on that time saying, Lord, I don't care how long it takes, I don't care how difficult it is, I'm in it. And I'm believing for it. I don't know what your it is, but you need to consider this principle. He is able also to save forever those who draw to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. We didn't pray to get God's attention. We pray because God has our attention. See, that's the thing. I wasn't going away to pray. As I was praying, and as I do pray, and most of the time, Kim, my wife would know, um, I get up almost every night, somewhere in the middle of the night. Um, and initially, you know, during the early years, I'd roll over and play dead. Oh no, I can't get up, Lord. It's just too cold out there. And then finally, when I got out of bed, um, you know, the the world is run by tired men and women. (laughs) And so at times you will be tired. Because you obeyed, you will be blessed. I do believe God, and this may not be the sentence you wanna hear, I believe God is nudging each one of us at different points in the middle of the night. And don't hate me for saying that. 
Our level of concern needs to match their need. You see their massive need. What is your level of concern for them? Now I'm talking about specific people. God has put people on all of our hearts, if we're conscious. God has put people on all of our hearts that, he, that you may be their best shot. What if you are the person that God wants to use, maybe not to speak, but to pray. Again, my mother could now talk me, but she could out pray me. Perhaps those we love won't wake up until we do. Ultimately, the condition of my heart and mind is my own choice. I make my own decisions about whether I'm gonna believe or not. And that affects me a lot because when God said it's your move, I mean, I, he's never said that to me like that. All of a sudden, I realize, you know, after 52 years of serving him, with that level of intensity at that moment and desire to see something take place in the supernatural realm, he said, good, go for it. I'll back you. Some of the most selfish words ever spoken. King Hezekiah, great man, did many things. The Bible talks about his first season, awesome. But then he showed spies that would ultimately take his nation into captivity. He showed them all the riches that he had. And, and then the prophet Isaiah came to him and said, because you have done that, uh, your children will be taken away into captivity. And he talked about horrible bondages happening, but then uh, he, the prophet also said, but it won't happen in your day. And sadly, Hezekiah rejoiced, well, at least it won't happen in my day. And that subliminal thought troubles me as well. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. That's it. I, it's happening. I can get so comfortable in that, in that mental ghetto, that I don't care about anybody else. And that really, I don't know, again, I, I alluded this morning that this is the shortest season of our everlasting life and all the assignments up ahead are contingent on our responsiveness and being awake here. That's not overstated. That needs to wake all of us up and pr provoke each of us. If we refuse to go forward into the future God has for us, we'll eventually go backward and return to the false security of the past. If only we had died in the land of Egypt, they said, or if only we had died in this wilderness. They'd been delivered. Again, I heard all the miracles today. It was unbelievable. You know, knockout punch after knockout punch, delivered from 400 years of bondage. And then in a short time, they're wanting to go back to that. They'd rather be a slave. And this, it's going back to the vomit, going back, you know, as a pig to wallow in the mud. But unless we allow God to form his fire within us, we'll warm ourselves by the fires of the world. Peter, again, I'll never deny you, Lord. You know, before the cock crows, you'll deny me twice, deny me three times. Right. And all of a sudden, he's warming himself by the fire of the world, trying to, he made a vow. I don't know him, cursed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, again, these things are meant to challenge and provoke us. I wanna show you a video that really encourages me um, because it talks about not just the battle we're in, but the victories he's called us to walk in and the people our decisions make that affect those we love. Here is that video. We are the church Jesus dreamed of. We are the bride he has always loved. We have fascinated the heart of God. But are we living the abundant life he promised? Have we lost our strength and focus to a depraved culture? Have we been stripped of God's priceless anointing? Have we made friends of enemies and trusted the counsel of man over the word of God? Years of compromise have left much of the church powerless, a shell of her potential. Having loved lesser gods, she entangled her heart, pursuing meaningless pleasures. Bound by the cares of this life, divine opportunities were squandered. 
Who will rescue us from this half-hearted slumber? God is calling the Elijahs of this day to move in power, the John the Baptist to stand in courage, the Esthers who, if need be, would give their lives. If you choose to embrace the temporary seductions of this world, you will find yourself bound by deception and blinded by lie. If you resist the devil and yield to the Spirit of God, you will live a victorious life beyond your comprehension. Now, as your life and family are in grave danger, you must pick up the sword of God's word and fight for your very survival. Surrounded by your enemies, you must not cower. Facing unparalleled dangers, you must not retreat. The battle in the spirit is for the hearts and minds of men. Jesus said, if you had known in this your day the things that would have brought you peace, the things that would have healed your heart, but now they are hidden from you because you did not know this was your day, your time, your moment. Today, if you see God's will, yield your heart, stand and fight. It is your only hope. Stand and fight. Your children are depending upon you. Stand and fight, and the Lord will be at your side. This is your finest hour. We yearn to walk in your victory. We ache to be with you forever. We are longing for your return. Even so, come. Let's all stand together. Someone come to the key, key, keyboard, if you will. You know, just seeing that, it always stirs my heart because, you know, many of us who have been given so much, we are grateful in our hearts. And only by holding on to and clinging to with gratitude what God has done and recognizing that we will never deserve what we have received 
And yet all around us, God is placing people in our lives that we can, again, my mother was not an evangelist sitting on a soapbox. I'm not sure she ever witnessed anyone. I have no idea. But she took what she had. And I just want to invite you today, we're going to minister in the gifts over folks, but I want you, first of all, to consider whether or not you want to join the battle or not. I don't believe there's any anything as a passive, wholehearted Christian. I believe being passionate for God. I'm not saying, I see young people in the room, I see older people in the room, whatever age you are, whatever gender you are, the Holy Spirit is wanting you to take seriously who you are called to be. There is a call on your life. And I want you to respond to the Holy Spirit. Yes, it will take, especially post-COVID where we were seduced by sedimentariness, where people are, are not as used to just doing what they don't want to do. And the enemy wanted to immobilize the church and petrify us and cause us to withdraw. And maybe it didn't happen here, but it certainly happened in California where I live. If today you are saying, Francis, I want... I want this next season to be a bold season. The, right, the Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. And a lion does not turn aside for any. I'm not trying to superimpose a different personality or temperament on you. You may be, most, be the most soft-spoken introvert in this place. But you still can be ferocious. You still can be mighty. There still can be something in your heart that I want God to use me. I want God to hear the prayers that I pray for those I love. And I'm gonna invite you to come. I just want you to fill the altar. I want you to come, come as a warrior, not a warrior. You're coming because you're saying, I want this next season to be different. Just push all the way to the front. Father, we come. We come bowing before you. You can stand or kneel, whatever you feel led to do. We come, Lord, claiming, Lord Jesus, that we are here with purpose. We are here with intent. If we are that person that needs to stand in the gap to be repairing the breach in our families, with our loved ones, with our children, our parents, our brothers, our sisters, our co-workers, our neighbors, just push all the way to the front. There's more people coming. Just, just scoot all the way to the front, please. Father, we want to live fully awake, God. We do not want to talk in our sleep, walk in our sleep, Lip sync, Lord. Lip sync some little religious expressions without l conviction. We are here with purpose, God. This is the hour. This is the day of salvation. The Bible says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. And the way I hear that, it says to me, you know, Francis, and I, I, I even about maybe six months, a year ago, and God does speak to my heart. He was speaking revelation to me. And, and yet something came on my phone, a little kind of real or something that looked interesting, and I just cut away for 15 seconds. And by the time I got back, that clear revelation was gone, and God convicted my heart. It's like interrupting someone when they're pouring out their heart. I wanna be awake, I wanna be listening, I wanna be obeying. I know even saying that, that could be intimidating. Trust me, both those events in January and last week were intimidating. I know there's more stuff ahead. That is intimidating. And yet fear is a talent that's provoking me. I'm going forward. I'm going to believe to see the goodness of the Lord. Before I can see it, I'm going to believe it. The goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Under your breath. Say the name of the person or persons that God's been putting on your heart today. All of us have been receiving, I believe, unctions. You're, you've been seeing the faces of people you know, you love, you care about. They're out. They're dead. They're deceived. They're backslidden. Or they've never made that commitment. 
Father, we do lift up, God, our loved ones, God, who, who need you so desperately, Lord God. We may be the most spiritual person they know. We may be the person who knows you the best. And so, Lord, if we are in that pole position, Lord, if we are in that place, we take seriously the stewardship, the grace and the call that's on our life. We do not receive the grace of God in vain, God. We recognize it, and I know my beautiful wife, and again, when I hear her pray, <laughs> and she lifts up the names of our kids and grandkids, and again, I, I'm happy to ski in her wake, but she provokes me, she punches me, she slaps me by her passion for them. I want to be that person too, God. I want to be awake, Lord. I want to live awake, God, while there's breath in me. I want to live awake. I don't care what people think about me. I don't care if it looks awkward and embarrassing. I'm an eternal spirit being having a temporary moment on this earth. I care about eternity. I care about those I love and the eternity all of them are facing, God. Right now, Lord, we, there's empty seats in this house. That means, that means there are people out there that, God, you want to bring to this place. This is a great place. This is a great place. Those of you who are here, you know there's a grace and an anointing here. Honestly, I could not ask people to come in many of the churches I go to, like you're, you're kneeling here right now. And that makes me sad. They're just not used to it. They're not used to, I'll do whatever it takes. And you, you would never stay here very long if you didn't have that somewhere tucked in your heart, I'll do whatever it takes. Because that is the only Christian message. I literally cannot read the Bible without being provoked. It stirs me all the time. To be the man I'm called to be. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, for these men and women, not by might, not by power. We're not gonna do it in our own strength. We're gonna flow, it's a dance. Life is a dance. I'm just gonna dance with you. You wanna lead me by your spirit. You wanna show me what to do next. I just wanna obey you, Lord. I hear your voice. I hear your voice today, God. And I do count it an honor, I tell you, coming back here, and I've had numerous people come up to me and mention a word. One man came tonight, he was 22 years old. When God gave him a word, and now, you know, almost 30 years later, he's approaching me, and it changed his life. What, what, what is happening in this room at this moment? You can remember the rest of your life. Father, we, we build an altar, right? We build an altar right now, God. We break up the follow ground, the unfruitful ground, the hard ground, the indifferent ground, the, the discouraged ground. Father, I pray for this beautiful lady, Lord, her intercession, God, is going up to you, Lord. Virtue is pouring out of her heart, God. She weeps and she aches for those she loves, God, beyond her words, beyond her ability, God. She takes her two mites, God, and she, she gives all she has, Lord. And I claim, Lord, that she would not be disappointed. Lord, only you can do what she needs done, God. You're the only one who can make that miracle take place. And again, the reason this is done publicly is that everyone can be splashed. If you're hearing what's being said and it's affecting your heart, you receive that word. Father, we claim right now that our tears have power. Our tears have authority, God. Lord, you, you said a broken and a contrite heart you will not despise. And so, Lord, I claim, I we agree together, Lord. Awaken our loved ones, God. Speak to them in the night seasons, God. Awaken them out of their slumber, God. Reveal yourself to them, Lord. We do pray we need a move of your spirit, God, in our nation, in this city, in this state, God, in this world. We need a move of your spirit. Lord, let it begin in our hearts, God. We don't need someone else to wake up. We need to be wake up. I need to be awake. I'm not gonna minimize my ability. I've had a lot, if you were to say, Francis, have you had more failure than success? If you're talking about my understanding, I've had far more failure, far more failure, far more failure. But I'm hanging in there 
As a matter of fact, one of the books I wrote, I say the greatest miracles I ever saw took place in projects God never intended to complete. And I finally learned I was the project. You are the project. I'm in charge of obeying. Outcome is his court. If I start deciding what outcome looks like, I'm trying to play God. The, the, the throne of God is made for one rear end and it's not yours. The God of the universe is the one who decides what outcomes look like. Adonai M. Judson was a, a missionary to Burma. He never saw a convert in his lifetime. And yet, a number of years after his death, there were 100,000 Christians in Burma. We don't know what the outcome is gonna be. That's not our stewardship. Our stewardship is obedience. Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. We are learning obedience as we step out and obey, as we do the will of God. God promises. You have a grace on your life. You have a grace on your life. You're an out of the box kind of a guy. You're ready to do whatever. You're ready to jump into any situation. And sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not. You've jumped off cliffs. You've done things that were dangerous. You've done things that, that wouldn't necessarily end up well and some didn't. But God's given you that kind of a heart because you sometimes, and I know my twin brother <laughs> was that kind of a guy and he wound up heading up a missions organization for four years. I grew up saying to him, Joseph, don't, don't, don't do that. Do not do that. That's not gonna end well. But he was the guy then that was able to step out and do different things. He had, a, he had um, in his missions organization, they had a, a retreat and they were asked to share what risk they would take. And he said, I, I had a lie <laughs> because I was willing to take any kind of risk. And so there's something that you have in your heart. You're willing to step up and step out. God wants to add maturity to your excitement. He wants to add conviction to the willingness to step out and do whatever. He wants to make you a mature man of God. Amen. So again, silly thinking's not gonna help. Mature thinking is gonna get it done. And again, I know you can't pull on leaves to make them grow, but you can also water with conviction that you're not the, just the life of the party. You're not just the fun guy, but you're the guy who has a conviction in his heart to love people. You have a great capacity to love well. You are liked and you are loved. And there's also a part of you that um, can be over the top. That's going to be groomed and balanced into an arrow that will ultimately hit the target. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You, my dear, this morning. Oops. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's so exciting. That was... A you, my dear. You, I know. Can you understand me? Yes. Okay. You know, there's an intercessor burden on your heart that aches. Your heart just aches. It just aches. It aches. It aches. It aches. It aches. It aches. It aches. God sees the cry of your heart. He weeps with you. He weeps with you. He weeps with you. There's a faithfulness there, though. Even though it feels like you're hanging by a thread, there's a faithfulness there. And God's going to honor that in your life. You just need some wind in your sails. You're in the doldrums. You're in that ocean where there's not a breeze. And God wants to put wind in your sails. Father, thank you for this, this deep well, Lord. This woman that feels so deeply, that cares so much, but whose heart is broken, God. Would you heal this heart, God? Well, we can look back and say, I, I wish that hadn't happened. I wish that didn't occur. And, and it's pointless. It's worthless. We have the cards we have presently in our hand. And that is sufficient to see God do something extraordinary. So I claim new faith, God, new hope, Lord. 
These were eternal things, new faith, new hope, new faith, new hope. She's got an extraordinary capacity to love. But you at times give up because you don't think your love matters. It matters. So, Father, give this precious lady hope and faith to believe for the impossible for her loved ones, for those she cares about. In Jesus' name, give God a hand. Amen. Again, if you get splashed, receive it. Just receive it. Would you stand? You know, you're, said, you're, you're a guy that says, here I am, God, send me. I'm ready. You're willing. You want to jump in. You want to be who God has called you to be. And that's a grace that's on your life. There's immaturity there, yeah, but God's going to groom that. He's taking a willing heart. He's willing. My people will be willing in the day of my power. And there's a willingness in your heart. He sees that. You know, he, I don't believe naiveness is incurable. I believe that God heals us and our understanding matures and grows, but he's looking for a heart that is set for him. And I believe you have that kind of heart. And the Holy Spirit is gonna use that in you as he fully awakens you. He's gonna use that heart that says yes to whatever. Here am I, send me. That's engrafted in your heart. You're ready to go and be and do whatever God has called you to do. And God's gonna honor that in your life. So grow into that space. It's a great space in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I know. It's hard to believe, isn't it? What is your name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. How old are you? Um, 19. 19. It's hard to remember right now. <laughs> okay, Elizabeth, you are a lightning rod. You are a catalyst. You are someone given an assignment, will run the race. You run with excitement, enthusiasm. Your enthusiasm is infectious. You glow. And I, again, I've, just, I've not seen you yet in this room yet, so I had no pre-thought about it. But I do believe that grace is on your life to invite others to come into a deeper relationship with God. And so God is grooming you for that purpose. Let, let your own relationship with God go deep. He's not boring. I know you hate boring. <laughs> He's not going to bore you. Trust the God who makes galaxies is not boring. But you have to have your spiritual eyes open. Though we pray that eyes would be open to see in the spirit realm who this young lady is, Lord the anointing that's on her life, the um, attraction that she brings to you because she has a triple dip of joy, Lord. She has more joy than many people have. And there's a, a hopeful anticipation that she carries in her countenance, Lord. There's an invitation she has. And that is going to be a catalyst for good, an encouragement for many as well in Jesus' name. You can stay seated. What is your name? Tommy. What is your name? Tommy. Tommy. Father, Tommy, Lord, you're awakening Tommy. Even this night, Lord, you're awakening him, God. He's a no-nonsense guy. He's a guy that is uh, a ham and egg, Lord. He's a nuts and bolts kind of a guy. And yet he, he has conviction about things. You don't want to mess with Tommy. And yet Tommy's a guy that would say yes to you, and when he does, he means it. Commitments he makes are real. Uh, and yet uh, the Holy Spirit is drawing him into a deeper commitment, a deeper place, Lord, a deeper surrender, and a deeper play to be a servant. It's not a lowly thing to be a servant. Right now there's a, a, a servant sitting on a throne in heaven. That's the highest calling. And so there's a steadiness there, there's a consistency there, there's uh, putting your hand to the plow, not looking back, there's a heat-seeking missile of locking on and doing whatever you're called to do. Uh, you're a lay down your life kind of person. You're like a Uriah the Hittite. Going into battle, you would give your life. And the Holy Spirit's going to use that in your life. He's going to make you that man that says, yes, here am I. I'm going, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just worship a little bit. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's lift our voices to God.
We look to you, Lord. We worship you. Move by your spirit, oh God. Move by your spirit, God. You can close your eyes if you would. Thank you, Lord. We honor you tonight. We honor you tonight. We lift you up, God. You be high and lifted up, Lord. Let the call of God that's on our life not be diminished. Let the call of God that's on our life not be diminished. Let it blossom. Let it grow, Lord. Like the, the uh, I heard that the cactus bloom in April. Let, let the blooming take place, Lord, even in the desert parts of our heart, God. Let the, groom, the blooming take place, Lord, in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You, would you stand? Your name, please. Okay, Lahida. Father, and close your eyes. Father, I thank you for this lady that has an administrative grace. She has an ability to, to take things, put them in order. She's a woman under assignment. She can hear what to do and then do it. Uh, she's a woman under authority. She's willing to say yes to her, your spirit. She's a soldier in your army. She's called, Lord. She's ready for her next assignment to follow you. And because of that, Lord, she's single. And her eye is single. Her whole body is being filled with light. There's an anointing and a conviction. I want to be used by God. And God's going to use you. He's going to fire you like an arrow into places that others would not go. You really don't care that much. There's a fear, fearless quality about you. You really don't care. You care more about doing the right thing than bowing to the intimidation of the moment. And God's gonna use that in your life in a supernatural way. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. This young man, would you stand? Your name. Close your eyes. Joshua, Father, I thank you for this man, Lord. Joshua, this is a, an awakening moment for you. There's far more potential in you than you realize. God wants to eliminate the distractions in your life. He wants to take away that desire to look elsewhere and, and cause you to fixate on what is eternal for your good. And so God is challenging you about your true identity. There's a lot of allurements that go on to try and draw you away, but the Spirit of God is challenging you to not be enamored by what think of you, what people think of you, by what God thinks of you. That is the most important thing. You will either make or miss the call of God in your life, depending on your willingness to yield to the Holy Spirit and say yes to His call. You're not too young to hear this. You're not too young to step out into areas but you've got to refocus your attention on the call that's on your life. Father, I pray, Lord, for Joshua, Lord. You've not named him that by accident. He's meant, I believe, to lead people. He's meant to be that solid, strong, fearless person. As he dies to himself, I, I love the fact, you know, oftentimes we take the verse about John the Baptist, and we say that John said, I must decrease that he may increase. He didn't say that. He said, he must increase that I may decrease. May Jesus increase in your life, Joshua, that you may decrease. And that's what your heart really longs for deep inside. Sir, would you stand? Your name? Gad. Gad. You know, um, others may overlook you, but God never has and never will. God sees a um, willing desire in your heart to jump into the fray. I, I see a picture of individuals linking arms and you're, you're a team player linking arms to get something done that an individual, a single person could not do. We can play the keyboard if anyone's alive there. You can play that a little more. Give her a little more juice up there. That girl needs more juice on her keyboard. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. 
Father, I pray that, that this man, Lord, would have an opportunity to reach many people. I see you speaking to people and communicating from a heart. I see you being a solid decision-making man. I see that you're a man that's not going to be tossed to and fro, but you're going to have that deep conviction in your heart that you, um, you know who you are. And that's going to grow in you and blossom uh, until you go to environments that are, are not uh, friendly, and yet you're willing to be confident in God. You're willing, really, there's a, a thing in your heart, you're willing to be martyred, which is a very unique grace on your life. You're willing to say, God, if it takes my life, then it takes my life. Not that you're going to do something foolish to merit that, but you're going to be obedient and obeying the Holy Spirit. But that willingness God's going to use in your life in a beautiful way. So, Father, I thank you for my brother, the anointing, the grace that's here. I believe he's a solid man, a solid leader, called to lead, called to be followed, a man under assignment. And I pray you make that assignment clearer and clearer in the days ahead. In Jesus' wonderful name. What is your name? Maria. Maria. I have a sister named Maria. I love Maria. Thank you, Lord. You know, Maria, I, I, I do, um, ironically, I have more the Martha comment that you are cumbered about many things, but only one thing is needful. And God wants to lift the burdens off your heart. He wants to lift the weight, the heaviness off your heart. The things that weigh you down and make you feel, I, I almost feel immobilized at times. I can't, I can't get to do what I want to do. I, can't, I don't see what I need to see and desire to see. So I need you, Lord, to give me the courage. I pray for a new backbone. I pray for a new courage. I, I pray even though uh, there is a feeling of, of lack and inadequacy, Lord, that you would make up the difference and that you would put in Maria's heart, Lord, a conviction that she is loved and received and blessed and that because of that love relationship you have with her, God, that uh, she can do whatever you've called her to do and she can believe for whatever you've called her to believe for. So I claim that I pray the discouragements and disappointments in the past would no longer rob her, Lord, would no longer define her, but that she would say yes to the future with wide openness, a wide open heart, by the power of your spirit, Lord, you can do that in her heart, in Jesus' name. Your name, please. Mary Lou. Nay? Mary Lou. Mary Lou. Mary Lou. Father Lord, we thank you for Mary Lou. Mary Lou, I wouldn't want to mess with you. <laughs> all right. That's all right. <laughs> uh, I thought I'd make a little song out of that one. Mary Lou, you're strong. You are strong. People, like an oak tree, they take shelter under your limbs because you're a woman of conviction. You really, I mean, you're ready to brawl in the spirit. You're a fighter. You're a scrapper. That's good, Mary Lou. We need that in the kingdom of God. You're a strong woman. You're a strong woman. Highly feminine, but strong. <laughs> Father, I thank you for Mary Lou, Lord. We need more Mary Lou's, Lord. But let this Mary Lou, like an older sister, like a mom, come alongside many to encourage them, to look in their eyes and tell them who they are. Affirm in them the grace that is on their life, the call that is on their life. In Jesus' wonderful name, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Give God a hand. Amen. Your name. Isabel. Isabel, you can stay seated there. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for Isabel, Lord. Again, wide-eyed anticipation, wide-eyed anticipation. Eager, excited about the future, ready to go. I'll go first. I'll go first. I'll do whatever. I'll jump right in. I'll say yes. Not naive. Just sincere. Triple dip of sincerity. I want what God has for me because I know it is best. And so God's going to honor that in your life. There's disappointment. There's discouragement. There's things you've anticipated that did not take place yet. But God's in charge. He will do that. But don't lose that, that sense of conviction 
that I'm excited about my future and I'm, I'm, I'm excited every day about my future, some, not some distant future, but every day about my future. I'm excited about what God wants to do in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. 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 I know there's different ones, and we're going to do a little more of a corporate thing. There's different ones that have a sense of a call in your life where you know you're called to minister to people in a broader sense, not just one-on-one. -on -one. And again, this is not a pre-qualification. This is not me setting you apart to that. It's affirming in you a burden that you have to want to reach people beyond just one-on-one. -on -one. You want to reach groups of people. Just lift your hand or stand. Stand and lift your hand. Stand and lift your hand. Stand wherever in the room. Stand and lift your hand. If that's the call in your life, just stand and lift your hands. Stand and lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. We stand in your presence, God. Again, let me say this, guys. This is an exceptional church. <laughs> this, is, this is not Sleepy Hollow. This is not people who are just coming to be religious. Religion drove me to atheism, candidly. Religion bored me to death. It still does. <laughs> I'm not interested in religion. I'm not interested in going through the motions, lip syncing, parroting different things. I want a relationship with God. I want the call of God on my life. And so you're reaching out today. You're saying, God, I don't know what it looks like. It's not going to be, um, it's not going to be glamorous. This is not about anyone being impressed more than God. God is the person that we are wanting to follow. And based upon our background, our temperament, our personality, our gifting, our grace, our calling, He will lead us to the right people. And folks, there's tons of groups that each of you can reach in this room. You're a little swatch Whatever you think, but I have this difficulty or this limitation, forget it. Who cares? God's not going to use those things. What he's going to use is a conviction in your heart is that I have a burden that I believe is God-given to reach groups of people. And if you're not going to be picky, you're going to let him pick those groups. You're going to let him pick who he wants you to reach. I mean, Paul the Apostle, the great Pharisee, Hebrew of Hebrews. God says, I got a call for you. It's among the Gentiles. And he could have gone, Dewey, forget that. But he realized that was the call of God in his life. And he embraced it. And the vast majority of us, if not all of us, are Gentiles. Because Paul the Apostle said yes. So, Lord, we accept the call, Lord. You said you saved by many or by few. I'm, I'm happy to minister to one person or a thousand people. It means nothing. It means nothing. I care about individuals because you care about individuals. A guy named Mordecai Ham, you probably never heard of. Mordecai Ham was a prize fighter in the 30s. He became an evangelist in the 40s. He went to a little southern town the churches wouldn't let him in, so he put his tent up outside the city. And a guy you may have heard of named Billy Graham meandered into that tent at 17 and gave his heart to Jesus. Mordecai Ham found one man who ministered to 200 million people face to face. So Lord, we lift our hands to you, Lord. And we say, I'm gonna lead you in a prayer in a moment. We say, Lord, here am I, send me. I want to reach people. I want to reach, Lord, those that you would call me to, God. I don't care what nation. I don't care what group they're a part of. I could care less. I just want to minister to more than one person. I feel that's the call that's on my life. It may be two people. It may be 200 people. Whatever. Everyone's important. And if you care about the one, if you care about little things, God said, I'll give you big things. Would you pray with me out loud? Heavenly Father, I embrace the call that is on my life. 
I embrace this night expressing my commitment, my willingness, my conviction that I will minister to whoever, whenever, wherever, and say whatever you want me to say. I will be whatever you want me to be. Whatever group you have in mind is not too small, is not too insignificant. I am ready to go. I am ready to obey. I will embrace the call that's on my life. In the name and the authority of Jesus Christ, I'm humble before you. Make me the man, the woman I'm called to be. Make me the person, Lord, that is willing to reach out at any given moment by your spirit. In the name and the authority of Jesus Christ. There's a man named Cullen who's not in the room tonight, I don't think. I met him on a plane coming here. He's pretty drunk, college student. Invited him to come. He lives, he goes to uh, UA, is what it called? Is that called UA? Cullen. Well, we claim Cullen. We claim the Cullens of this world. He said he'd come. <laughs> he broke his leg in Cabo. Uh, and so he was on crutches and was going to friends in LA. The point is, I, I want to care about a person. I was looking for color. God makes your heart big. He'll fill your heart. None of us have been shortchanged. Impossible. Again, and part of that, just without belaboring it, that secret to loving your life course is helping you discern that you have been given out of all possible options. Temperament, personality, gifting, calling, history, background, pain, everything. God's written a perfect script for you. Perfect. And if you stay on the operating table and let him do it, he'll have his way. I'm gonna try and just show a couple more slides just because I believe there's more I wanna to say to you. I don't know if we can get this going again. Um, but the courses that are starting you know, I can stay in your life for a little bit. Uh, two courses, Supernatural is starting a week from Monday. Secret to Loving Your Life starts in April, four weeks in a row. There's books there. Again, every book I have, if you have nothing online, you can get a digital copy. It's there. If you want to be part of the course, either one, be $19 or $15, um, I'm sorry, $59 uh, if you want to get the books. Again, all of it, thank Pastor Warner because uh, really it's lowered for him. But also I believe in you tonight. Look at you guys. I mean, honestly, there's a grace that's, that's on your life. You give me hope for the future, okay? <laughs> you do. You've given me hope for the future because I'm alive believing to see a move of God like I got saved in. Do you know in those days, the, the fruit was so low in some of the houses, there'd be conversations saying, how long before a person gets saved? The record was an atheist came and with 18 minutes he had prayed to receive Jesus. That's called the move of God. We baptize 15 people a week in pickups in the middle of nowhere for week after week, month after month, thinking it would never end. It was a season. Father, I thank you for this place, Lord, this holy place, Lord. And this great season, love low tide, love winter, awesome. Keep it going, Lord, until we push our chips to the middle of the table and say yes. It's a great time to buy in. I speak a blessing over this church, this people, everyone here in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ, amen. Give God a hand tonight. We bless you. Bless you, Lord. We bless you. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.
the Lord. Hope I'll see some of you online maybe a week from Monday or maybe in April or somewhere. And maybe I'll come back at some point. Anyway, I love you. We're done. God bless you. Where you are, let's bow our heads. We're going to dismiss uh, in prayer tonight. Just remember everything uh, that he's been talking about is available in the lobby. How many of you appreciate Pastor Anfuso, his wife Susie? Amen. We're, we're so grateful for your life and the blessing you are to the body of Christ. We thank you for your labors, your faithfulness, your diligence to minister everywhere God sends you and we will be praying for you and for your ministry to be extended throughout the earth and God's influence that is supernatural to go forth before you everywhere you set foot that God would give you favor amen we appreciate you brother hallelujah Lord amen let's bow our heads tonight amen God has been so good to us today Let's go in the strength of the word of God. And Pastor Daniel Monreal, would you lift your voice and dismiss us in prayer tonight? Thank you for joining us online. If you gave your heart to Jesus, we'd love to reach out to you and welcome you on your walk with Christ. You can get in touch with us by following the link in the description that says, New Believers Start Here. Below this, you can also find links to send our pastor's prayer request and questions. While you're here, consider subscribing to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to know next time we go live. See you then.